What is the rock cycle? Let's dive in. So, if you've studied geology, you know that rocks on Earth are categorized into one of three groups based on the way in which they form. We have igneous rocks like this pegmatite, which formed when magma cooled and solidified very slowly deep underground. We also have metamorphic rocks like this piece of gneiss here, which was an existing rock that was exposed to periods of intense heat and pressure over time. And then finally, we have sedimentary rocks like this sandstone, which formed when grains of sand were compacted and cemented over a long period of time, forming this rock. Now, keep that in mind, and one other fact as well, which is that rocks change over time. They're not the same. Even though we think of them as permanent, they change and evolve as they're exposed to different factors on Earth's surface. And that in itself is really what the rock cycle is. So let's take a look. Here we have our three categories of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And you'll notice there are arrows going in all directions, signifying that any type of rock could and often does become a different type of rock. But we need to take a look at the circumstances that could make that happen. So let's begin with igneous rocks. As we mentioned, igneous rocks form as the result of lava or melted rock erupting on the surface of the earth and then cooling and solidifying. The result is an igneous rock. But keep in mind that this can happen deep underground as well with magma, which is simply melted rock beneath the surface. That too can cool and solidify, though it takes a lot longer. And that's what gives us the different characteristics of different types of igneous rocks, how long the magma or lava took to cool off. And so, in the grand scheme of our rock cycle here, it's important to know that if any sedimentary rock is exposed to heat such that it melts into magma or lava and then cools and solidifies, we can get an igneous rock. And the same is true of metamorphic rocks. They can melt into magma or lava and then cool and solidify to become igneous. Next up, let's look at sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks form in a variety of ways, but the most common is when we have sediments or chunks of rock that have been weathered off of existing rock, forming grains of sand and silt and clay, or even larger pieces like pebbles, cobbles, and boulders. Those sediments can be compacted and cemented together, often underwater, to form sedimentary rock. And so in order for that process to happen, we need for a few processes to occur on the surface. So for example, if I have an igneous rock that is exposed to weathering and erosion from wind and ice and rain and other conditions on the surface, turned into sediment, and then that sediment is compacted and cemented together, our igneous rock can become sedimentary. Of course, the same is true with metamorphic rocks. They too can be weathered, eroded, and then compacted and cemented, forming a sedimentary rock. Finally, let's look at how metamorphic rocks form. As we mentioned, metamorphic rocks form often underground as a result of the movement of Earth's tectonic plates generating immense heat and pressure that changes rocks into a metamorphic rock. And of course, that can happen with igneous rocks or sedimentary rocks. They can be altered or changed by exposure to intense heat and or pressure underground. And so that there is the rock cycle. It's kind of crazy to think that rocks change over time, but they do, and they will continue to evolve on Earth's dynamic surface as processes continue the way they have for nearly 5 billion years.